Hey everybody, today I'm going to do another Power Query video. This time I'm going to show you how you can pull foreign exchange rates into Excel. So the main things I'm going to cover here is how to pull data from a foreign exchange website, how to alter that, that link so that way if you want to pull um, a, a different currency or change the dates, you can do that. And I'll also show you how you can... Um, Merge, merge queries. So if you don't want a list of every single possible exchange rate combination, you're only interested in uh, some select um, currency pairs, then you can, you can do that as well. So I'm going to start with pulling the data in from this website, xc.com, which has currency exchange rates on it. If I go under tools, there's an option for, there's an option for historical currency rates. And if I click on that, I can select, you know, the currency I want to use and the date, hit confirm, and it's going to generate this table for me. So this is the table that I'm going to use to load into Power Query. You'll notice up here, it's got the currency, it's got the date. So that's really useful to me because now I can adjust this in, in Power Query if I want to manipulate it or, or change any one of those items. I don't need this section here that says table, pound table section. So I'm just going to select this link here, control C to copy it. And then what I'm going to do now is load this in Power Query. So I go into the data tab, click from web. And then what I'm going to do is just paste that link into this, into this URL space here. Hit OK. And now Power Query is going to pull that data from that from that page. So I'm going to hit connect. And now it's going to give me a, a list of all the tables that that appear or that I can find on there. And so you can click through all these ones to see what they are. And the one that I'm going to use is this table zero here, which has the currency, the name, the units per USD, um, and then the USD per unit. Now, before loading this, what I'm going to do is first transform the data because you know this is a, a pretty large table I may not necessarily need all this so I'm gonna go to transform data first before I actually import it in so I'm gonna pull this table over so this is what it looks like in Power Query right now so what I'm gonna start by doing is just filtering some of these currencies you know let's say I don't want to see all of these combinations on here I just only want to see a handful so let's say I'm gonna select you know um, the euro British pound and let's say the Australian and Canadian dollars hit OK and now it's filtered right in here and one of the cool things about Power Query is because it saves these steps you won't have to repeat these steps um, later on Another thing I can do to, to simplify this table is I can remove this, this name column because odds are if I know the, know the, currency, uh, the currency abbreviation, I don't need the name. So I'm just going to right click this and remove just to cut down on the number of columns that I have for my, for my table. Now what I can do is hit the lo close and load button and this is going to put the data into into an Excel spreadsheet now. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create some variables because right now it's set up that it'll just download uh, the, these exchange rates per per the USD on basically August 22nd date. But I want it to be a bit more versatile so I can change um, the currency as well as the date. So I'm gonna create some named ranges, one for currency and then one for date. So for currency, I'm going to just type in USD right here. For the date, I'm going to put an apostrophe just to make sure this reads as text because I don't want to deal with, with formatting and any sort of those issues. So I'm just going to type in 2021-08-22. What I always do with, with named ranges is, tr or, or fields that someone would enter, that entry fields is highlight them different colors so it's obvious. And so to create a named range, all I do is click in here, type in currency, select this cell, and enter date. And so I've got my named ranges set up. 
what I'm going to do now is put these into my query. So I've got my query open here, so I can right click this and hit edit, and then I'll launch Power Query back up. Now, what I can do now is on the, on the Home tab, there's a section for Advanced Editor, which is what I'm going to click here to, to edit my query and put in my named ranges. And so what I'm going to do here is enter in the variables that I've, that I've created. So for currency, this is the, the name of the variable I'm going to use in Power Query. I'm going to type in Excel current workbook, open and close. And uh, if you want to copy the syntax exactly as I've got it here, uh, feel free to check out the, the description for this video. I'll leave a post. I'll leave a link to the post so that you can follow along. Um, but you can basically repeat this sort of format for any named ranges that uh, you want to reference in Excel. So, and there's a quick, and there's an easy way to check that you've got this right. Um, the one thing you're going to want to do um, is make sure you put a comma after this because um, the way that it's, the way the syntax is set up here, you want to put in a comma until you're actually um, done creating your code. So I'm going to copy this and then do exactly the same thing, except this time I'm going to use it for the date. And Power Query is, the, the code in here is case sensitive, so you want to be careful. Um, if you run into any errors, it might be that you have put something in lowercase that should be in uppercase, so that's one thing to check. Um, if you got this green check mark saying no syntax errors, that means that you know, you, you're not missing any commas or you haven't missed the closing a bracket or a parenthesis. And so now a good way to check is you'll notice these applied steps. I've got currency now here and I've got and I've got date and you can see those match my named ranges. So that means that that's working correctly. Now, so what I'm going to do now is go back to this advanced editor because the thing I still need to change is this source for this web page. So right now I've got that xe.com link. And so what I'm going to do is put a quotation mark here because this is where I wanted to stop. And here I'm going to use a named range for currency. And then again, another ampersand to go back to the rest of the code and then and date. And here I'm going to put again, quotations, ampersand date. And that's all I need to close that. Again, check to make sure that the syntax is okay. Hit done. And I'll go back to the source. And so it's so if you get these privacy warnings in um, Power Query, you want to set these to, to public so that they so that they disappear. This might happen if you download a file from somebody or uh, you know deal with any sort of connections. It's usually a one-off thing that you need to do. So now you'll notice now the source is updated, and I can double check that refresh this preview to make sure that it's working properly. So that tells me that the named ranges are working correctly. Now the one important thing to to do before before I start using these variables is to get rid of this change type step. Now this is a step that Power Query inserts automatically, so it, it changes um, these these fields, these columns, you know, to text, to number based on based on what it thinks it is. The problem with that though is right now it's pulling. Um, the USD exchange rates. So you'll notice here it says units per USD. So if I were to change this to a different currency, this column is is going to change. It's going to say something else. Units per you know euro or GBP, whatever the case may be. And so that's going to cause an error if it's looking for this this hard coded USD column. So the safest thing is just to remove this. And if you do need to change the formats, um, you're better off doing it yourself because that usually causes more harm than good if you've got that change type in there because it's looking for that exact same column, especially if you're using variables and your headers might change. So now I can close and load this. And now this is going to refresh. It's going to be the exact same data. But now let's say I want to pull um, a different query. This time, let's say I want to pull the AUD 
currency for 0731. And now to refresh the power query, just go to the data tab, hit refresh all. And now that's going to update this. You can see right here, it's going to continue updating here. And once it's loaded, I should see these figures update. Okay, so now my data is refreshed, and so you'll notice the rates have, have updated. But now the problem is I, I don't have the USD currency in here. I've got the Australian dollar, which is going to be one-to-one, -one, so it's not terribly helpful. So what I'm going to do now is create another table, this time of just the cur currencies that I want to show up in here. So I'm going to... Type in a header here for currencies, and I'm type in AUD, CAD, EUR, GBP, and USD. So these are all the ones that I want to show up. So what I'm going to do is put this into Power Query, and here what I'm going to do is select on any one of these values and hit From Sheet. It's going to confirm my, my range, and it's going to ask me if I have headers, which I do. Hit OK. And now it's going to load this into Power Query. And so what I can do is rename this table. Let's call it FX table. And now what I can do is merge this with my other query. So I'm going to go back into here. I'm going to get rid of this step where I manually filtered for the currencies that I wanted to use. Just X that out. Hit delete. And what I'm going to do instead now is on the home section, there's this option off to the right for merging queries. I'm going to click on that. And now it's going to give me an option to select another table to merge with. So I'm just going to select this FX table and it only has one column. So I'm going to link these two up. I'm going to leave the default to, to left outer join and hit OK. And I'm going to click this button here, and what this is going to do is expand all the columns from that other table. And so the ones that have a match obviously are going to have a value. The ones that do not have a match are showing null. So what I'm going to do is filter this to get rid of the null values. Hit OK. And now I filtered it using that table instead of manually doing this. And so now, now that that query has served its purpose, I can remove this column here. And again, this really doesn't matter in Power Query if you, if you remove columns after the fact, because you'll notice here, you know, it's saving all those steps along the way. So you don't have to worry about, you know, removing a, a column that you're using in your calculations earlier on. Now what I can do is hit close and load. And so one thing that Power Query automatically did here is it loaded this, this table into its own into its own sheet, but I can just remove this, delete, and now it's just going to say connection only, which is just fine. So now let's say I just want to pull in uh, the euro, euro pound exchange rate. So I'm going to ch change this to EUR. Let's say change the date to 0101. And what I'm going to do is I don't want all these currencies. Let's say I just want British pound right click delete table rows so now i've just got january 1st and i just want the euro pound currency so i'm going to go to the data tab hit refresh all and now my table has has updated and so now if i go back to my the, the xc.com website and i select euro for january 1 Hit confirm, and if I look at British pound, it's going to have 0.9004406231, which is exactly what I have in here. So that's that's in a nutshell how you could pull in the foreign exchange rates using using variables, merging tables to select you know just exactly what you want to see in uh, in Power Query. 
Now, if you wanted to see the the historical exchange rates between two two currency pairs, what you may want to do is use something like Yahoo Finance, which has a which already has that set up pretty nicely. So here I've got the euro uh, pound conversions, and so if I click on historical data, you know I've got this going back as as far as I need to, and then you can just use something like this download link here to to download this into Power Query. So if you want to see how that works, there's another video that I have that goes over Yahoo Finance and downloading downloading the uh, stock prices. So it's a similar method to that. And so that's another way if you want to actually see the, the the historical ranges between between two currency pairs. But if you want to grab in multiple pairs, then the xc.com website works works well for that. And doing it this way, you can manipulate it however you want, what uh, what date you want to look at, what currency pairs you want to include. So that's another show how to do this in Power Query. And uh, thanks for watching.